Yo, what is good nerds? Six Meister Jonathan here again with a brand new video and today we're going to be publishing a movie. This is actually a very old series on my channel that a bunch of people have been bugging me on Discord to bring back. So today I bring you this, the compilated movie with some slightly improved audio to get feedback from you, the community. If you want me to continue this series as is, and kind of just go on where I left off, or if you want me to restart with higher quality, since that is a very old series from near the start of my channel, and it isn't really that great. So, even though the story is fairly entertaining, and I think you will enjoy watching it today, I want you to go down into the comments and decide if you want me to continue this series as is, or restart, yay for yes, nay for no, yes being me restarting completely, and no being me continuing it as is but there will be a criteria for me to continue this this video will have to have at least 250 comments and 500 likes if you guys want me to completely remake or continue this series so if you think you do enjoy it make sure to smash that like go comment down below and do everything you can to spread this what if and this video out there into the community so copy link share it to your friends all that good stuff so without further ado my name is Six Meister Jonathan. This is What If Naruto is a Fox Age. Roll that intro. But before we actually start off this video and get back into my very cringy past with what ifs, I want to warn you once again, the editing in this video isn't going to be all that great since I'm not redoing it. I'm just kind of compiling the old footage together. So just keep that in mind. The audio isn't all that great at times since it was on an older microphone that used to mess around, all that type of stuff. I also want to let you guys know that I do in fact do art over on Fiverr. So if you like the art in the thumbnail or any of these images you see on screen, which is actually a little spoiler for the series. This is Kyu from the series, one of the main characters and their new design since their original design was something very old before I actually knew how to do anything with Naruto. And I just wanted to give you guys a little heads up and a little view of now that I have access to custom art and stuff like that, what the character looks like. So if you really do like these images, make sure to go check out my Fiverr in the description down below. And if you want some insight into how I make these videos, I also have a Discord link down there as well. So I've wasted way too much of your time now, guys. Let's get going. We go back in time to a uh, four-year-old Naruto. He had just been bullied a lot more. Even though when he was in the orphanage, he was bullied a lot, but recently got kicked out. He thought of going to go tell the third Hokage, but he thought he should maybe deal with it himself because Gigi can't do everything for him. And when he is a ninja, he needs to be independent. So now we move on to Naruto thinking what to do. He thinks why people hate him. Obviously, this is because Danzo revealed him to be the Ninetales, but whatever. He moves to a, a forage in the Leaf Village, not too far away from the main gates, or side gates, doesn't really matter, just in a large forest area. In this for, uh, forested area, Naruto saw some shinobi. They were doing basic training. These were Genin. They were doing chakra exercises. He would see this and try to copy what they were doing, which was currently tree walking. After of him just sitting there trying to burst his chakra as much as possible, he gets a, a hang of having chakra in general. He then also move on to actually trying the tree walking. He doesn't actually get it, but after a few hours of him expending a lot of chakra, he'd just say, well, it's time to go find somewhere to sleep. Can't be doing this all night. We could try again tomorrow. He'd find a little or a gigantic tree with gigantic roots that make kind of a cover. He would go lay down and after a while he'd see a little white fox and he'd start playing with it. And this fox seemed special to him but he couldn't put his finger on it. So the fox after playing with him for a while falls asleep on his chest or that's what he believes. Also, sitting there, he finally spills his mind, 
wish I could become a great shinobi. Maybe people would respect me. Maybe people won't hate me if I just became Hokage. This catches the fox's attention as you see its ears wiggle. Well, is that so? The fox would say, Naruto getting a fright would jump up and the fox would just gracefully land. You didn't have to throw me like that. Naruto would go, uh, you're a talking fox? How's that even possible? The fox would explain that it's not just a normal fox, it's a summoning fox. I am a summoning fox, as you can see. I just came out here to relax and saw you. But you said you want to become a great shinobi. You know what? Show me what you got, kid. Naruto would ask the fox what it meant, show me what you got, and the fox would explain. Show me how great of a shinobi you are. Try and catch me. The fox would then bolt around trees, jumping to them like a missile in bullet light speeds. Barely able to see it because of how fast it is. Naruto would say, how am I supposed to catch you if you're that darn fast? Don't worry, just catch me, the voice echoes from all directions. Naruto would say, bet, I'll catch you, and start using the method he learned from the trees, where if you put too much chakra in your feet, it makes like an explosion, and you get a temporary burst, uh, burst of speed. He'd continuously use this, and the fox had actually been watching him doing his training, and thought of how stupid he was, but now sees that this kid is actually pretty smart. He used a concept that was incorrect from a previous thing to make something new, which is currently a giant burst of speed which just as well might be a good technique for the future naruto wouldn't catch the fox and would eventually just lay on the ground exhausted with no chakra left you know kid that was a good try but you lost darn looks like i'm not going to become a great shinobi after all naruto would say lifting his hand to the moon letting its light shine through his fingers or maybe i will I'm gonna try again tomorrow, and that time I'll catch you. The fox would smile and say, sure, we got as much time as we need. Naruto would fall asleep under the tree. The fox would not. The fox would go into the forest and get some two oddly shaped leaves. They look almost like bowls of sorts. It would slowly gather water with a small O oh, with a smaller leaf and just continuously put it into the bigger one to have like a bowl of water, and also gathers a lot of berries. It would then also go to sleep. When Naruto wakes up, the fox is nowhere to be seen, and he sees the food. He'd smile and start munching down on the food, and Lao would say, wonder where the fox went. I need to catch it this time. The fox would come down and say, I'm right here, but eat first. After that, we could start our exercise again. Believe it, this time I'm gonna catch you. Naruto and the fox would start again. After Naruto's lunch is done, he would uh, use the bursts, a uh, mini bursts of speed, to try and catch the fox as the fox is jumping from tree to tree at blinding speeds. Naruto would realize the more uh, energy he put into the blast, the faster he would launch. This is when he had an idea. The sensei from yesterday explained how the tree walking worked. Maybe if he bounces off the trees himself, it might work. After about a few hours, he gets the use of clamping to the trees, but not for long after shooting off of them. This would go on for the next few weeks until Naruto had gotten two distinct new techniques. He'd be able to stick to a tree indefinitely, and he'd be able to channel chakra through his legs to give him an enormous burst of speed. This was the first time he'd catch the fox, on a verge of exhaustion. He'd put as much chakra into his legs as possible, bursting off catching the fox as he passes out. He falls on the ground holding the fox in a tight grip until he woke up. The next day the fox would explain that Naruto had an ingenious plan by pumping his legs full of energy and then dispersing it through his soles which gave him an immense amount of speed. This time much more than he did before because of the amount of chakra he built up. Naruto would see this as intriguing and ask the fox if they'd finally start their training. And the fox would say, well, my boy, we've been training all along. Haven't you just mastered two new techniques? Well, uh, it looks like that, Naruto would say, rubbing the back of his head. So, what's next? Uh, fox sensei? Don't call me that. My name is... I don't really know. Hmm, 
I don't know how to put the fox's name into your translation. Maybe just call me Q-U for now. Bet, Naruto would yell. And say, so what are we doing next? Q-U, sensei. And the fox would smirk. Just Q-U is fine. Okay, what's next, Q-U? They would start their training on the next basic exercise that the fox saw other humans for the last few years doing, which would be the water walking. This is something that improves their chakra as a whole. Foxes don't have this problem, for they're born, born with excellent chakra control and massive chakra reserves, for even though they're summonings, they are partially chakra beast, partially biologic. So, yet they can't fully die, it does hurt them every time they do, they can feel pain, and they can regenerate. So, it's basically pros and cons at this moment in time. They'd move on to see Naruto gain exponential growth, and even in one day's time, this time with the fox's help, master water walking. The fox would explain it as best as it can to Naruto how to do it. The fox's foot also being smaller and differently shaped from Naruto's would make the paws have to attach much differently. So, after that, they would pretty much have the water walking exercise done. About two weeks have passed since they started their training, and even on water walking, Naruto mastered it by sparring with the fox, who could actually kick pretty hard in Naruto's opinion. It, uh, the fox started learning just as much as Naruto did. Even though this fox seemed to be very skilled, it didn't know about the burst trick. It just used chakra to naturally make its body faster. With Naruto's technique, it learned how to fight with chakra so you know, when it's about to kick naruto after jumping it would make a massive burst of chakra come out of its feet knocking naruto over making him lose concentration this also helped the naruto gain the knowledge of how to no matter what happens still stick to the water which would also indirectly make him stick to trees so it's a progression of chakra at this moment in time also Naruto would see exponential growth in the Taijutsu department, since instead of learning Taijutsu without ever having a proper fight, every fight is him seeing an opponent that's also learning, discovering new techniques, and him also creating new techniques. He basically learned every time the fox disperses a piece of chakra, he would use the nearest uh, dispersal point within his arms or legs, being chakra points, to disperse chakra out of them and basically create a makeshift chakra shield not necessarily a shield on its own but the burst of chakra would counter a physical burst or an actual burst of chakra which could be useful in the future naruto is learning a lot just by having a friend and having something to experiment with which is the fox of course the fox would say that maybe naruto has grown a lot she should introduce him to her people Naruto would ask, okay, introduce me to your people. And yes, the fox is a female. Sorry if my voice didn't make it sound like it. So, the fox would take Naruto deeper into the forest. Deep into the forest, there's a gigantic hole in the ground, surrounded by trees that almost block it off. The only way to really get in is to basically cut through an illusion that's one of the trees that block it off and walk inside. No shinobi of the leaf so far had come into this forest, for it was almost against the wall, and getting this close to the wall could have you uh, prosecuted for traitorism or trying to escape without leaf. So, after being taken there, Naruto would meet some more foxes. Most of the foxes would be uh, spectacal, or skeptical and wouldn't really say anything because Naruto does emanate fox-like chakra, so... They assume he has something to do with the Kayubi, but we we'll just leave it for now, since the Kayubi was kind of evil at times. Wasn't necessarily a being created from evil, but did some questionable acts in the past. So, after the fox leads Naruto to their chieftain fox, or the head fox, a conversation would start, initiating a new relationship between Naruto and the fox kind. Quick interruption, this is just me, Six Mice, reminding you guys that next week we will actually be posting a new what if in the form of what if Naruto had a curse mark. And if you are excited for that, make sure to smash like and comment down below. Remember, at this point in this video, you've probably seen the bad quality of this series. And if you 
do want me to continue it, make sure to just go down there into the comments and let me know that, hey, you should probably redo this or not. Nah, I'm fine with the quality. Just remember, since this video does have a 500 like and 250 comment requirement, uh, this is individual comments, meaning if you spam, your comments won't be counted. Only one of your comments will be counted towards all this. So make sure to make it count. Without further ado, let's get back into the video. So, last time on What If Naruto Was a Fox Age? Naruto, a kid Naruto around four of age, was introduced to the chief of the Foxton tribe by his friend Kyuyu. Kyuyu introduces Naruto to her father, the chief, Kyuton. Kyuton introduces himself as a man of honor and asks Naruto why he thinks he is worthy of living between the fox people. Naruto would reply that, I don't really think I'm worthy. I don't even know what worthy really is, but I'm just here because Kyuton asked me to be here. Obviously, this would put a smile on the chieftain's face because... This is a human not really interested in self-gain. But everyone has something they want to achieve, which is self-goal, not really uh, the former. So he'd ask, child, what is your goal in life? Naruto would smile. Uh, I would want to become Hokage, to prove myself to everyone. Kyuton would chuckle. Haha, <laughs> I like this kid already. Hear you. Show him one of the empty rooms within the cabins. He can sleep near you. You will become training partners. I think I see great potential. Obviously, I do have reason for just putting them together from the start and also having this be this quickly because there's going to be a really odd relationship between Naruto and Kyuton. Just keep this in mind. So... Kyuyu would show Naruto to his new room, and there would be some, you know, basically a bed, but not like a human bed, it's like some hay was formed in a circle, but Naruto doesn't really care, he's been sleeping in the forest for the last few days, so this is better than what he already had, also less wind. Kyuton would start their training, because he is the one that personally trains all of the youngings within the tribe. Naruto would be put within uh, QU's, uh, generation, which has not yet received any training. Their training was up and coming, and for the last two weeks, they were supposed to be in the forest, training by themselves, preparing for what may come. QU already seems to have somewhat of a fighting style, and so does Naruto. This impresses the rest of the fox people for QU, and really makes them jealous because of Naruto. Kyuton obviously asks how they learned this technique, and the technique I'm uh, specifically speaking of is not only tree climbing, that comes pretty naturally for foxes, but the shooting yourself with chakra almost like shooting yourself like a rocket. They'd explain that they were playing this weird game in the forest, and it kind of came by. It kind of came from Naruto chasing Kyuyu and shooting himself off of trees, and it kind of became like a fighting style. Kyuton would say, excellent, this might help in the future of your training, but not right now. Right now, we're going to focus on martial arts, the fox style of martial arts specifically. For the rest of the foxes, this would be easy, but you, Naruto, you need to become a fox first. Wait, what? How do I become a fox? Naruto would ask sarc sarcastically because there's not supposed to be a way. Okay, let me explain, Naruto. When us foxes want to come into the human world, we have a human form. He would puff, uh, poof into like a human, which would be assumed a hand, and Naruto would say, Oh, the transformation you do. Wherein the fox would say, No, this is not the hand. This is no illusion. I actually transformed into a human. There's no fox, an exterior. No type of sensory ninjutsu would be able to see through this ninjutsu. This is a complete transformation, or the absolute transformation jutsu as I like to call it. You need to learn the opposite of what we do. You need to learn how to turn into a fox, Kyuton would say. Naruto would start his training off, and Kyuton would see 
that the foxes get their human forms at the same time because this might be beneficiary within the near future because you dumb can see Naruto's presence might change their existence as a whole and bring a better era for the fox people in general. The next few weeks would pass and Naruto would somewhat get the fox transformation down. It takes a lot of time and concentration, about 30 minutes to 45 minutes just for him to turn into a fox. So it's not really something that comes that easily. But the foxes got their human transformation down in the same time, but theirs is mastered. So there's a difference between them and Naruto currently. A big difference for them leading ahead. Obviously, some of the foxes would be smirky that they're better than the human, but Kyuyu just supports Naruto, her friend, for now. Basically, what Kyuton would do now is he'd assemble all the fox kids, which would be around 9 to 12 kids, and then Naruto on top of that, tell them to get into their human forms, all of them transform into something similar than Naruto, with the slits on the faces, all different hair colors, and they just basically ask what now. Kyuton would transform into his human form, which is a rare occasion, only happening now and then, and he'd say it's time that they go get human garb because every fox needs a uh, human shinobi gear if the leaf village does put them out on mission this confirms another theory that the leaf village does have knowledge of the foxes being there and would also send them out on occasion along with someone like inazuka or something like that just for a lot of back because the foxes have a lot of control over themselves and a lot of awareness so they'd make their way into the village and get some general equipment like a uh, shinobi vest, a uh, shinobi undergear, which is basically that jumpsuit type of black jumpsuit that most Chunin and Jonin wear, uh, shinobi sandals, kunai, shuriken, and they basically need to return. Obviously because of the large group, N Naruto wasn't noticed in the middle because all of them look the same, spiky hair, cuts on the face so people in the village really couldn't tell that that was naruto because he just fit in so moving through the village back towards the fox people would see the this large group of children and large male go into the forest and obviously question it but shrug it off most of the high level shinobi like former ambu and even elite jonin would know that that's where the fox village lies and that that they should stay away also, I need to mention this, Moshinobi and even the Hokage know that these foxes have nothing to do with the Nine-Tailed Fox. Absolutely nothing, there's no connection. Uh, the Nine-Tailed Fox is a chakra beast, these are summoning animals, so we could just break that connection right now. There's no association. So, Naruto, being a part of the tribe more or less, gets the hold of his transformation jutsu because he has to practice it basically every morning to get it down and eventually does this is around the time they'd start you know using uh, their fox forms to learn the fox style of martial arts i'd say we're gonna have a one year time skip right here and i'm gonna say the time that already passed had naruto turn five and it's gonna have the one year time skip turn him six in this time, he learned a lot of techniques, um, but for now, I'm going to say it's the fox style martial arts in the human and fox forms, some basic chakra control exercises, and the age of six marks a weird occasion. It's time for them to go to school, but because there's a lot of generation uh, people of the generation of fox right here, all of them have to go to school, all 13 of them, or all 12 of them, including Naruto, and this is the year they go to school. So when they arrive at the entrance ceremony, it turns out the only two people from the tribe, quote unquote, that's going to be in the same class is Naruto and Kyuyu. Kyuyu is going to replace Sakura. Don't ask me why. I just don't want Sakura there. Really don't feel like her. And basically, we're going to start it here. People or kids at the start would obviously not like Naruto, except the select few like Kiba, Shino, Shikamaru, Choji. I, I doubt Ino would feel anything, but Sasuke. 
Sasuke really hates Naruto. Because usually all the girls are over him, because the Uchiha clan are still alive, by the way. Uh, all the girls are always over Sasuke, but you, you, she is a one-track mind, does not give a fuck, I like Naruto, leave me alone type. So, this really pisses Sasuke off because he can't be the complete center of attention. But he pretends like it doesn't bother him. So, a few months go by and the first exam comes up. Also, Sasuke's personality hasn't changed too much because the Uchiha massacre hasn't happened and probably won't happen, which will be explained in a little bit. So, specifically talking, this test coming up is sort of like beginning test, but it's also not. This is just to test someone's overall ability. Naruto has gained immense chakra control to the point where he could water walk while fighting and not concentrating on low chakra reserves, which means that he is really far into the high tuning to low joning level chakra control and has obviously Kage level to high Kage level chakra reserves. And this really puts him ahead in the ninjutsu apartment. The jutsu they were supposed to do was the transformation. But Naruto, with his large reserves, would perform the absolute transformation, transforming into a Ruka, while no one else could really perform the Jutsu at all, since they were shown it there the first time that day. Also, Kyuyu could do it as well, because she also knows the Jutsu. This uh, would go on for the rest of the day, where they'd do Kunai and Shuriken, which Naruto and Kyuyu would also pass, with Naruto in first, Sasuke in second, Kyuyu in third, because Naruto in this one would also be practicing things like that, thanks to Kyuton, the elder, and would really pull ahead. But the real, real difference that would come is when Mizuki would especially put Naruto against Sasuke just to get him taken out. But what they don't know is Sasuke isn't even in Naruto's league, not even by far. He can't even see Naruto's league. Naruto and Sasuke would initiate in combat, and Naruto would easily, with his graceful movements, shrug Sasuke's attacks off as if they didn't even phase him, because they didn't. Sasuke would get progressively madder and then eventually throw a fireball jutsu, which Naruto would counter by kicking it back at him. This is where the most important part of earlier training came in. When Kyuton said that the importance and uh, this might become important in, later in their training when he referring to the chakra blast is he referred to he could train Naruto and Kyuyu to do this on a larger scale. Naruto basically just made a giant cup of chakra and as soon as the fireball hit it he just exploded it backwards which would, all, uh, which would basically mean that the chakra would turn in on itself and go the other way. Obviously some of the fireball would go away but people would really start to get scared because Naruto just sent a giant fireball at Sasuke. All the girls would be like, oh, Naruto cheated because he used whatever that was. But obviously, Iruko would clearly point out that Naruto did not throw the fireball. That was Sasuke. And it is illegal in a Taijutsu match to throw fireballs. So Sasuke is disqualified and Naruto is the winner of the fight. And even if that didn't happen, Naruto would have still won. This obviously pisses some people off, especially Mizuki, because there's not really much he could do. And, but, I want to go over some stuff before we start. So, in the last part, we left off with the start of the Academy days. I decided that I was going to skip the rest of the Academy, because that was just kind of a pretense, like what would happen beforehand. And, throughout the series, I'm going to flash back to the Academy and just explain some stuff. Naruto is going to go through a lot of changes, have a new look, he's going to be a lot cooler, and yeah, let's just get into it. So, we start off with Naruto, uh, just sitting there. Him and his friend Kyuyu have been sitting there for a while, it seems. When the, re when the rest of the class walks in, basically scoffing and just sitting down. It seems like most of the class don't like Naruto and Kyuyu, per se. It also seems that they're usually in class hours before it starts. This is a curious situation, but they move on. As the day progresses, a specific test is brought up, and this test would be the cloning jutsu. Any form of cloning is actually okay because of people like Shino, who makes bug clones, I think it is. 
but whatever. So this is obviously the graduation test. Everyone has to at least make one perfect clone, three to actually pass. So Naruto would be put last because Iruka just wants everyone to see what a true prodigy is because in this one Naruto is really good. So Sasuke would go up and is able to make five perfect clones trying to show off a little and Iruka would call up Kyuyu. Kyuyu would come up and do the clone jutsu making seven perfect clones just to dunk on Sasuke. Obviously he scoffs like hey, nothing important blah 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 and this is when Naruto comes up. Iruka tells him to do the jutsu and winks at him and he knows this is his time to show off. He said, well, let's go outside. Iruko would say that, okay, the next, the physical exam is coming up in any way, so we could just as well move outside. When they get outside, Naruto goes through the hand signs and makes 50 perfect clones. Obviously, this pisses off most of the class because Naruto in these years has literally just been there to piss off Sasuke. He's kind of made it his little side goal for this series, just to annoy the absolute shit out of the Uchiha who thinks he's better than everyone else. So, Naruto would be the rookie of the year, and Kyuyu in second, Sasuke in third, so Sasuke is not that important off the bat. So, we are gonna move on through the one week time skip. I'm gonna just say in that one week time skip, Kyuyu and Naruto train most of the time, and it's time for them to meet Kakashi. Kakashi would be late, and I'm replacing Sakura with Kyuyu, if you remember, so Sakura is really not a problem. Kyuyu, uh, Sasuke, and Naruto are all put on the team because they were requested by Kakashi. So, they're all put under Kakashi, and Naruto and Kyuyu leave as soon as Iruka says, wait up for your senseis. Everyone's like, where are you going to them? And they're like, our sensei is Kakashi Hatake. He's known for being late. He's going to be here a few hours late, so we're just going to come back in like 2-3 hours. Everyone would be like, okay, you're probably going to fail because of your laziness. So, Naruto and Kyuyu will leave, go do some light sparring, whatever, and actually run into Kakashi outside. He'd ask them why they're outside of class, shouldn't they be waiting for their sensei, and they'd be like, oh, Kakashi, yeah, we knew you were going to be late, you're always late, you literally have a reputation for this. So, we thought we'd get some training in while we still could. So, we heading over. Yeah, sure, Kakashi would say it with a bright smile. Basically, Kakashi would send in a clone into the school building to go fetch Sasuke, while him, Naruto, and Kyuyu all just used chakra to walk up the side of the building. Kakashi wanted to show them something cool, but they could already do it from way earlier in their childhood. Kakashi would also see that they have quite a mastery over it because he would sense that the amount of chakra that Naruto is outputting isn't near someone of his caliber should be putting out. So this means that he has a lot of control over his chakra, especially the dormant parts. So when Sasuke gets up there, he's surprised to see them and they'd say they ran into him and he'd be like, whatever, okay, can we just start? Kakashi would be like, okay, introduce yourself, emo boy. And he'd give the entire speech he gave in Hanan. Because I decided to kill off the Uchiha because I could, uh, because I didn't want to explore a lot of timelines like that. So he'd give the same speech and he'd look over to Kyuyu like, how about you girl? And Kyuyu would just say, hmm, interesting. I'm just here to help my friend Naruto. Kakashi would ask, are you a fangirl? And she'd say, actually no. Me and Naruto have just been good friends since we were kids. I just respect him and his decisions. Kakashi would basically shrug it off as just being odd and then look at Naruto. Naruto in a calmer posture would say, Well, I want to become Hokage. Obviously Sasuke would be like, You Hokage, pfft, never. Kakashi would look over at, uh, at Sasuke and say, Well, that's coming from third best. He was Rookie of the Year, which makes him more likely to become Hokage than you, little emo. Stop calling me that! Sasuke would scream out, and Naruto would laugh. I want to become Hokage to protect this village and the people that I love, the people that I care about, the people that showed me kindness. That's my ultimate goal, to protect the ones I love and make this world a better place. Kakashi would be happy that Naruto was groomed into such a... 
good young person, but also feels bad that he wasn't there to help create this. He'd explain that they shouldn't eat in the morning and that they should show up, but Naruto and Kyuu would be basically... They're too into a routine to not eat. They'd be like, uh, we go training after eating all the time, so we're good. After leaving, they'd just go through their daily routine like normal. In the morning, eat breakfast and also show up like two hours after Kakashi told them to. They still waited another hour before Kakashi actually showed up and Sasuke was like, uh, you're not supposed to be late and Kakashi was like, they were here before I was, so it doesn't really matter. Obviously, I'm dunking on Sasuke a lot, but I'll expand on his character later in the series, making him a little more important, not as important because this is about the foxes and Naruto, at least in this situation. So, we move on to Naruto basically asking why they're there, and Kakashi would explain the exercise. Off the bat, Kyuu and Naruto would know that the shinobi's greatest, basically, strength is teamwork, because this has been pointed out multiple times in their training, because they're more of like a duo within the tribe themselves, if you will, like the fox clan, tribe, whatever you want to call them, the fox village, I don't know. They're like two partners, they've always been together, always fought together, and was really were really good by adapting with other people's fighting styles to be able to fight with them. So, for, uh, straight from the start, they are trying to team up with Sasuke, but Sasuke doesn't want to know anything about it. But they also make it apparent to Kakashi that they're trying to team up, and even in the forest, they'd wait until Kakashi was in either in earshot or had concentration on them. And they try to approach Sasuke and he truck them off. And they'd jump out and say, you heard that, right? He doesn't want to cooperate. We know that this is a teamwork exercise, but him not working together can't really help us. So Kakashi would say, hmm, close enough. Why don't you two just fight together then? If it's about teamwork. Naruto and Kyuu would just fall back and basically formulate a plan to force Sasuke into uh, working with them and basically smile. Naruto would peek off in the direction that Sasuke is in and Kakashi would notice that they're probably planning on doing something with the Uchiha boy. They'd basically make their progression start uh, to attack so uh, Kakashi and make it look like they're about to grab the bell when Sasuke would leap out being like, I can't let them get it, I need to work with. He'd obviously try and trip them up every now and then, but them expecting it would be able to ignore it like it's not happening and they'd at least grab the bells and basically... Naruto, being the one that grabbed it, would give one to Kyuu and one to Sasuke, and like, why don't you pass? Sasuke would be like, I don't want your bell, and throw back to Naruto, and just, be like, if I don't pass for my skill, I don't want to pass at all. And Kakashi said, well, then you would have failed, because you didn't pass for your skill. You passed because of teamwork. That's what this exercise was all about. Obviously, being just like in canon, it was an exercise about teamwork. Also, Kakashi would say that Naruto and Kyuu probably have a lot more they were hiding because they stuck to purely taijutsu. And it was an odd taijutsu at that. He could barely keep up. He had to block attacks he would never even suspect coming from any human being. As he'd point out, Naruto would just giggle and Kyuu would pay it no mind. So, it's not really that big of a deal. They'd basically just move on to where they'd need to arrive and train with Kakashi. Kakashi would basically focus more on Sasuke in this one because of Naruto and Kyuu already knowing a lot. But also them knowing more after them training with Kakashi or them training with each other and Kakashi training Sasuke. Kakashi seeing that Sasuke is really far behind these two would already have started teaching Sasuke water walking and tree walking, tree walking coming first, obviously, and also he'd start talking to them about elemental nature. Naruto and Kyuu would reveal that they both possess wind and lightning style, and that they already have some progression within the two arts because they both have high affinities. So Kakashi would ask them what they have, and they basically explain they know how to channel the two types of chakra, through items and limbs. Kakashi would question the limbs part and they'd explain that their form of taijutsu uh, basically requires them to sharpen their nails with chakra and wind style lets them elongate them. 
so it really helps and also lightning is just to boost their body to new speeds and stuff and kakashi would ask for them to show him the lightning stuff naruto would obviously offer to go first and would take a weird unhuman like stance on the floor and basically start channeling lightning through his body sasuke would just stare on in amazement as naruto's muscles bulged a little not really a lot to make a big difference but it's a visual difference nonetheless He'd then start rocketing between the trees and then eventually just land in front of Kakashi with a kunai and said, I couldn't be able to do that without enhancing my body with lightning chakra. Of course, normal chakra I could have used to do the body flicker, but that gives you the drawback of, you know, tunnel vision. Kakashi would be like, thinking to himself, wait, tunnel vision. I could have prevented all of this with my lightning blade if I just enhanced my entire body instead of just my movement with the... Basically, having Kakashi question his own design over his own jutsu. And he basically asked them if they were gonna learn anything from him, and they'd ask if he has anything to teach them. Last time on Naruto, having a Fox Sage mode, Naruto and his Fox friend Kyuyu had graduated from the academy and had finished the Genin exam. Really quickly, Kakashi had realized that they far outmatched Sasuke and could probably compare it to himself. He doesn't know what type of training the two had done to get this powerful, but he is curious to see more. So he would like to use them in experiments going forward, or at least in ninjutsu and training experiments. On the other hand, now we see Naruto and Kyuyu back at the fox compound or the fox village, Faced with Kyuyu's father, Kyuton. Kyuton would tell them that this is the day they need to fight. They need to see their nobility rankings within that of their members. Obviously, Naruto at this point had become an honorary member and everyone within the Fox Village had grown attached to him. Liked him, seen him as family. So... When he is presented with the opportunity, he will also combat in this competition. The 10 members of which this consists is Naruto, Kyuyu, and some filler foxes. Or what I'm going to call filler foxes. They would all go into a combatant situation where they would all fight against each other. Within this time, we learn of the training Naruto and Kyuyu had done. Everyone is required to be within their fox form, so Naruto would also have to transform into a fox. We start off pretty simple battles with Naruto and Kyuyu both handling their fights, most likely with Taijutsu with slight ninjutsu enhancements. And as the fights progress, they get slightly more difficult. With them showing off some chakra enhancement like the wind claws and the lightning movement. But... Nothing too intense until they're finally faced with each other. Kyuyu would actually give up on her fight with Naruto, but would be pressured by the crowd to actually do it. Naruto, on the other hand, hasn't had a proper fight with Kyuyu ever. They'd only have spars, and neither of them had ever gone all out. So, what would end up happening is they'd be put against each other. They, at the start, had similar fighting styles, but Naruto had changed his to follow more the path of movement in power. So, he'd use his movement to create giant force blows. While Kyuyu, on the other hand, would maneuver around blows and then land agile hits to slowly wear the opponent down. And this would put their fight on another level since Taijutsu wasn't really getting them anywhere. So what they then moved on to was ninjutsu. They had actually concocted a jutsu, or not concocted, but learnt a jutsu from Kyuton, which he had modeled after the Nine Tails himself. It was a jutsu similar to a bijudama, or a tailed beast bomb. It used pure chakra, of course, and it created this sphere of spinning chakra in front of your mouth. And as you would release it, it would start expanding, creating a small explosion vortex against the thing it hits. 
This is obviously a lot similar to the Rasengan in the sense that the Rasengan was also based on the Biju Damas or Tailed Beast Bomb. So when Naruto and Kyuyu had learned this, it instantaneously became one of the strongest things within their arsenal. On top of that, they had mastered uh, solid clones or shadow clones, and theirs was a little different. They're what I like to call fur clones. I got this idea from, obviously, the Jackie Chan Monkey King movie, where he had been able to make clones of himself through his hair. And it was basically the same. Fragments of them created from their hair, slightly weaker, that could either look different and have their own sentience, or be exactly the same, with only the drawback of them being about half the strength. This was obviously the perfect clone technique, but they couldn't do too many of these at the same time, since it would wear down on them mentally and would take some of their chakra reserves, which they can't regain until that clone is dispersed. So, when it comes down to it, we have them throwing Rasen guns at each other, or Fox bombs, as I will be calling them, at each other enhancing them with elements. They had gotten some training with Kakashi as the time had gone by. It had been about a month. He had tried training them to use the Chidori. Basically, the training was not for them to gain speed or gain control of their lightning element, but for them to channel the lightning throughout their body and then expelling as much as possible through their hand. Q.U. had learned how to channel the lightning through her nails, basically creating a scratch that could paralyze the opponent. Naruto, on the other hand, could wield the lightning into some sort of sword, some would say a blade, and would use it to swiftly slash at his opponents, doing interior damage. Obviously being chakra that wasn't physically slicing through them, giving both of them their own versions of it. But... Kyuyu and Naruto separately had progressed their versions of the Fox Bomb, with Kyuyu adding the Lightning Element and Naruto adding the Wind Element. When these two clash, it would basically send a shockwave throughout the arena, with Naruto and Kyuyu both taking the full force of both blows, meaning they had taken a lot of residual damage. On the other hand, at this point, they'd be stopped as of the fight, and they would both be tied for the first place, as they had caused a lot of ruckus and could cause some village guards to come. And out of Genin from the Fox Village, or Youngings as they would call them, these two had clearly been the most powerful, so they would be given the royalty standard of nobility, or at least the clan leaders of the next generation, if you will. But, on the other hand, as I said, they had trained with Kakashi to obtain different versions of the Lightning Blade, and he himself had started changing his. He had started creating a weaker version that didn't use the Speed Amp, and for some reason the coloration would change when he would add different amounts of Chakra, creating a purple glow after about a month of experimentation. So, he could use it without it draining even half the chakra and not causing the blinding effect, which means he can use it without his Sharingan. But, this would have to wait, since Team 7 would have their first C-rank mission. Up until this point, they had handled five separate D-ranks. One being babysitting, one being dog-sitting, another being pulling wheat from a farm, and another taking documents from one library to another. The last would have just been to make Haruzen some coffee. So now that we're presented with it, and Kakashi feels his team ready after Sasuke had progressed a lot, and in his thoughts, having caught up with Naruto and, uh, and obviously Kyuyu, and even having unlocked his first tomo of his Sharingan. This took Kakashi a long and grueling effort to put Sasuke through countless death experiences, but not until he took Sasuke out on one of his missions and Sasuke was nearly killed by a mere bandit had he unlocked his Sharingan, or his first Tomo Sharingan. Kakashi, on the other hand, had used this to his advantage. He could now start training Sasuke to use the Lightning Blade, which he did, 
In doing so, he had neglected the Tomo of the Sharingan completely, forgetting that improving one's Sharingan would not only improve one's visual prowess, but one's abilities as a whole, and might have given Sasuke an even bigger upper edge. But I digress. Let us return to the mission. Team 7 would be presented by Tazuna, an old man from the land of waves. He was drunk at the time and was quick to insult the team. First, he'd start off with Sasuke, but as he looked over to Naruto and Kyuyu, who had chakra enhanced their glaze and had spiked their killing intent. To anyone who wasn't a chakra user, this would be menacing, to say the very least. Killer, in another sense. He had felt like they were feral beasts coming out to hunt him. And he would be quickly to compliment them, and even Kakashi, to try and be in favor of at least some of these, having quickly sobered up. Kakashi would instruct the team to meet at the, uh, the Leaf Village gate in approximately an hour, with Naruto and Kyuyu returning to the Fox Village just to let them know of this, and would then go out. Last time on What If Naruto Had a Fox Sage Mode, we had seen Kakashi teach his signature jutsu, the Chidori, to all three of his students, and watch each of them improve it in their own unique way. On top of that, we had seen the hierarchy, or how the hierarchy, of the Fox Kingdom slash village had functioned through combat. The one with the highest physical prowess would be crowned a noble, and maybe even a royal, to determine who obviously the next leader would be. So, today we're going to be going over the Land of Waves arc, as we had set that into motion last time. So, Naruto and his fox friend Kyuyu would now meet the rest of Team 7 and Tazuna at the Leaf Village Gate. After this had happened, they would set out on a long, seemingly boring journey. But it would not stay boring for long when they encountered a puddle in the ground. Obviously, it had not rained in days, so they had seen something suspicious off the bat. And Naruto and Kyuyu's enhanced senses of smell had gone off almost immediately, indicating someone was there. And even though Naruto and Kyuyu were about to blitz these two individuals, who were seemingly disguised in a genjutsu, Sasuke had realized them mere moments earlier and had decided to go all out. He would enhance himself with lightning chakra or the new form of the chidori created by kakashi which is an increasement of lightning chakra throughout your entire body creating two lightning fists it seeming like or two smaller versions of the chidori sasuke would grab each of them by the neck with his sharingan blazing having both of them basically under his boot he would look down at the Chunin as he strangling them, only to drop them by Kakashi's command. They would then be tied to a tree and interrogated. What happens after this is... It's brutal, as Kakashi would seemingly snap their necks, cutting their heads off in a single slash, and then putting them into storage shields. Obviously for the bounty, he would say as Tazuna would look at him in disgust. Kakashi would now look up with a glare at Tazuna saying, Now, for you, I want an explanation of what's happening here, or what has happened here. Tazuna, way too scared, would immediately splur out everything about how a tyrant named Gato was basically holding their village with an iron grip and they hadn't really been able to make any money countless families went starving they didn't have any money to repair their village and their last hope was this bridge to create a steady source of income and allow for shinobi to enter and access the village a lot easier hopefully driving the tyrant gato out kakashi knowing that the demon brothers were commonly associated with zabuza would let his teammates know this but they would all insist on continuing tazuna would accept this as Kakashi would send off a scroll with the ninja hound to report back to the Hokage, just in case anything happens to them, and Kakashi doesn't send any more note within a week, 
they should send more shinobi for the team have been slaughtered. Now we see them head out and even cross a river of sorts. And all of a sudden, the mist that had seemingly naturally surrounded the village would start thickening. Naruto and Kyuyu would feel the chakra in the air, knowing that this is unnatural. Kakashi would have his suspects, but Sasuke would not realize anything. At least until a loud duck would come from Kyuyu, as everyone would either jump or duck away, with Naruto and Kyuyu jumping onto a tree close by. Kyuyu would smell something as Naruto would just nod as she would vanish into the clearing. On the other hand, Naruto and Sasuke, along with Kakashi, would be encountered with a man standing on top of a sword, which had gone flying through the air mere moments ago. Kakashi would utter the following words, Zabuza Momoshi of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen of the Mist, Demon of the Mist, might I say. Obviously, retorting a response from Zabuza as Kakashi had raised his headband, revealing his Sharingan. Kakashi of the Sharingan, I will presume. It's an honor to kill you. As they would quickly start interfering in combat. But moments after they had thrown only a few jutsu, Zabuza had captured Kakashi within a water prison. Naruto and Sasuke were about to interfere when they would hear something land behind them. It's Kyuyu holding a kunai to some masked individual's throat. She would push them up and order Zabuza to let go of Kakashi with Zabuza saying, Oh, a hunter named. Whatever, kill her off. It'll be better off that way. As Kyuyu would actually pressure in doing so. Obviously knowing this is no hunter nin. She had Zabuza sent all over this person. Zabuza would finally retort, She's just a tool, you know. She's, or he's, nothing to me. He means absolutely nothing. Kill him. Do it. He's nothing but a nuisance. As Kyuyu would seemingly thrust the kunai into this person's neck, Zabuza would jump out, leaving Kakashi, showing that he actually cared about this individual, trying to slap Kyuyu away, but she would use her speed to quickly avoid him. Naruto, on the other hand, would not take kindly to this, as he would seemingly appear above Zabuza with his Shidori blade in hand, trying to chop downwards. But somehow Zabuza's sword was able to stop his chakra blade. Obviously, this had to be chakra enhancement. There's no way a physical blade could just stop chakra like that. Chakra is not physical, of course. Zabuza would remark on how Naruto is pretty powerful, but he's not there yet as he turns his sword to the side and basically hits it from behind, putting enough force to knock Naruto back. Zabuza would now thicken the mist once again and then create a few uh, water walls to throw off his opponents as he escapes with Haku. Kakashi would thanks for the assist of getting him out of the water prison and would make mention of them most likely coming back. He'd also thank Sasuke for staying back and protecting the bridge builder, which Sasuke of course had not done intentionally, but he doesn't want to look stupid, so he would pretend as he did. Obviously, Sasuke is now thinking to himself about how he was frozen in fear and how that wasn't necessarily an Uchiha thing to do. They would make their way to Tazuna's home within the village and would be introduced to the family. They would be introduced to a kid named Nori who was seemingly out of it. He wasn't all there. When Kakashi would feel something, a presence not too far from the house, he would fling a kunai through a window shattering it, obviously apologizing for this happening, but the kunai would seemingly hit something. This would leave a splash of blood, but no trail as this person slash thing had disappeared. Somewhere outside, as the group are getting acquainted, similar to in canon, this person who had been hit by the kunai stands, slithers away as they say, Ugh, blasted shinobi. Uh, I should have known. I should not let my guard down, the great Orochimaru. Uh, why I did all this to only spy on Sasuke, I do not know. But maybe I should interfere with Sabuza. Maybe I could offer him something. 
as he'd make his way to Gato's secret lair, one of his business allies, obviously. He would talk to Zabuza and Haku, who had not been too injured from the fight, but had seen that they were greatly outclassed. They had two Genin that could easily take on Haku, and Kakashi didn't even know what the third could do. All he knew was that he was an Uchiha, and Kakashi had held him back himself, so he was in a disadvantage and was about to call off deals with Gato until Orochimaru arrived, telling him about a power he could give him that would increase his strength a lot more. And back with Team 7, we see that they had started basic training exercises alternating protecting the bridge builder Tazuna between them, or obviously Naruto and Kiryu, as Kakashi would insist on training Sasuke even further. Naruto, on the other hand, when he was on duty, would create clones from his fur, about 8 or 10, not too many, who were all physically strong. They would help with the construction of the bridge and would speed it up exponentially. Until about a week later when they encountered Zabuza and Haku again. So, last time we left off, we were busy with the Land of Waves arc. More accurately, we just were about to start the encounter or second encounter between Zabuza and Haku and the Naruto gang or Team 7. So yeah, let's just start it off there. Zabuza and Haku would seemingly stand there for a while staring down Team 7 as something would encroach from their necks. Some marking spreading across their body. Haku would leap into the kids as she seems or he seems a little bit stronger than he did in their prior encounter. Last time Kyuyu was able to greatly outmatch Haku to the point where she couldn't even keep up but somehow she had gained this gap she had crossed this gap like I'm talking she had been on Kyuyu's ass right now and Kyuyu would struggle to keep up forcing Naruto to join in as well and at this point it seems even Kyuyu wasn't going all out but going all out meant she had to reveal her other form which wasn't such a good idea at least for now so her and Naruto would keep Haku busy for now as Zabuza would start attacking Kakashi Zabuza had the same markings and this time seems to outmatch Kakashi Kakashi would have to use his Sharingan off the bat. Even though he did so last time, he didn't go all out. He only predicted Zabuza's movements. But now he's gonna have to know what they are. Exactly. There should be no room for flaws. If he does, he might just die. Sasuke, on the other hand, would lay back with Tazuna and help either group if they're put in a distant situation. But for now, nothing happens. With Naruto and Kyuyu fighting off against Haku, they would suddenly be trapped in a demonic ice mers, one of Haku's special jutsu under her Keke Genkai, or his Keke Genkai. He would leap from the mirrors, barely being able to be seen by the two shinobi, but they're able to sense what's happening. Maybe not see, but they could smell Haku physically moving from one mirror to another, the scent seemingly changing immediately. When they decide, they can't handle this. Kyuyu would poof into a fox as she would start maneuvering around every one of Haku's attacks. Previously, Haku was able to slice through them slowly but surely, but now Kyuyu could keep up, at least seemingly. Obviously not being able to counter even once, but Naruto, he had another idea. He would once again create a new version of the Chidori, this time much different from the first. He would disperse lightning chakra from his body after going through hand signs, saying Chidori Dome, as it would actually hit Haku. Now with Kakashi, Kakashi is able to somewhat keep up with Zabuza, but it's not exactly that. He would look and he'd realize he's getting exhausted. This small encounter between them and hand to hand isn't working, not at all as he jumps back going through hand signs as he would yell Shidori Raiken as he rushes towards Zabuza. You might know Shidori Raiken as another jutsu but 
it doesn't really matter. As he would successfully land his first hit. Zabuza would have none of this, as he would yell out to Haku, Do it now! As both of them start morphing, their bodies changing. This is the second state of the curse mark, Zabuza would explain. The word curse mark catching Kakashi's eye. He remembers it all now. This is the same thing that happened to Anko, someone he had known for years. He had not expected Orochimaru to be here, but he would yell out, if they have the curse mark, Orochimaru's close team, watch out! With them trying to frantically look around as they cannot find... They cannot find Haku. As Haku would finally emerge from one of the mirrors, trying to gab at Naruto, he'd actually be hit. But now, he knows. He would start slowly morphing into a fox once again. Smaller in stature. Obviously, he could take a larger form as a fox, and so could Kyuyu, but the smaller they are, the harder it will be for Haku to hit them. They would start channeling chakra, bursting around the mirror, trying to destroy them, and only being able to merely chip them. Huh, they think. They know they have to use the lightning element if they want to keep up, both channeling it without even a word. Their coordination as a team was something else. As Naruto dives and does a flip to try and hit Haku, he'd realize something. He sees the bridge builder knocked out on the ground, but no Sasuke. He'd flash his eyes towards Kakashi as he see not see him there either. He'd say, Kyuyu, it's time. We can't hold back. Something has happened to Sasuke. Probably like Sensei said, Orochimaru, as he was able to blitz between two mirrors. Kyuyu would say, Got you, Naruto, as she starts morphing into a bigger fox, bigger than the dome at least. It would shatter, sending Haku back. This is where the ultimate fight would begin. Kyuyu's true form versus Haku's second state curse mark. So, Naruto, he'd be chasing through the forest, following Sasuke's scent. He would feel another presence, probably Orochimaru. It reeks of snakes, and to his knowledge, Rochimaru was the snake Sani, indicating he was after Sasuke. Why? Most likely because of that accursed dojutsu. Sasuke, on the other hand, would have awakened his Sharingan once again. He would have been able to use the first Tomo, or maybe even the second Tomo, against Rochimaru. He was able to keep Rochimaru back for a while, but then Rochimaru got tired of playing, as he felt Naruto coming. This great presence and oh, taste of death, he would feel. He wouldn't feel like taking care of this as he'd bite Sasuke while Naruto leaps through the trees, sinking down into the earth. Sasuke would scream out as he feels the burning of chakra sizzling on his skin. Naruto would land there just able to catch Sasuke before he fades out of consciousness, with Sasuke saying, that bastard as he fades away. Naruto, on the other hand, would look around the area. It had seemed that some giant animal had broken through the forest line. Sasuke had tried to defend himself, but it seems like he got hit, where he sees branches and a tree broken. He would have then seen Sasuke throw a fireball, obviously not firsthand, but he'd see the scorch marks in that cardinal direction. He'd see kunai in the ground, and even some paper bombs detonated nearby. So he knows a battle ensued, but he could also only smell Sasuke's blood, meaning this battle was one-sided. He would take Sasuke back as he'd see Kyuyu, who had been fighting with Haku in this time. Kyuyu had actually been able to keep up in speed now, as she had taken her true form. No longer bigger than the dome, but merely slightly bigger than a human, if I had to say so. She would be greatly outspeeding Haku, with Haku not really knowing what this is, for she had never fought a fox person before, or at least what she assumes to be some new transformation of someone like the Inazuka clan, a dog-based clan. And as far as her knowledge, foxes were never a part of this. But she would eventually succumb, not being able to take on the lightning-empowered fox. She had lost her speed and stamina. Not even her jutsu was doing anything. The fox would use lightning style to break any senbon she threw, any senbon she had even created with her ice. 
the dome wouldn't be enough since she could clearly break through that. So she had one last choice, a suicide move, but she would hear a whistle. This whistle was caused by Zabuza, who had been facing off against Kakashi. He had morphed his body and had somehow lost an arm after another taijutsu slash ninjutsu exchange. Kakashi might not have been able to sense Zabuza with his curse mark empowered mist, but every time Zabuza would attack, he left a dangerous sound behind. This curse mark wasn't completely compatible with his stealthy style, Kakashi would think as his eye would morph similar to Zabuza did, had. He would gain a kunai type shape within his eye, as he would slowly morph away pieces of ground and even pieces of clothing. He even managed to break the executioner's blade. But the most important feat was when he got rid of Zabuza's arm. Zabuza, not expecting to lose an arm, would have stood still, in shock that this had happened. The executioner blade breaking is something, but losing an arm not even a shinobi could process that as he screams out kakashi would activate his jutsu the purple lightning as he charges towards zabuza who had only let out a whistle this would end in haku appearing in front of zabuza to take a hit but now dead zabuza appears he would say demon of the mist zabuza gato Zabuza would reply, an exchange of eyesight, as Gato would start going on a rant about how he's weak, even kicking Haku's dead body, as nearly a thousand bandits stood behind him. For Shinobi, those numbers are nothing. Even a Genin could take out a thousand civilians, Zabuza would screech. He had not gone down yet. He would look to Kakashi, a new passion burning in his eyes. Kakashi would do nothing more than nod, as Zabuza would rush into Gato's men, Gato obviously trying to get to the back, slaughtering every single one of them. Naruto was merely able to arrive to see this, as he'd say, the redemption of a character and the death of a villain. Zabuza would now lay on the ground, requesting one last thing of Team 7, for him and Haku to be buried. They may even take the Executioner's Blade as a trophy, with Naruto saying, sure. He would take the Executioner's Blade not for himself, but for his teammate Sasuke, who had lacked that extra edge. At this point, he was just becoming a copy-paste of Kakashi. Maybe this would be enough to break him from Kakashi's footsteps. Team 7, now having defeated Zabuza and Haku, and Sasuke even having gotten a new weapon, something that could make him stand out as his own person, would stay to oversee the bridge. At least that's what Naruto and Kyuyu would do. Kakashi and Sasuke are off somewhere training the Executioner's Blade. Obviously both of them are really interested in what's the difference between a the Executioner's Blade and just a normal sword. Obviously, Chakra Metal, letting them actually, you know, condense chakra and control them, manipulate it much easier, with Kakashi even being willing to use lightning energy along with it, and teaching Sasuke how to do it. He would not be worried about teaching this to Naruto and Kyuyu, as they have physically shown him to be capable of doing this already, so teaching Sasuke this does not leave any ne part of neglect from him. Naruto and Kyuyu would actually have a bunch of intercation with not only the bridge builders, but people in the town helping them get back on their feet after the entire Yato situation. Naruto and Kyuyu's fur clones obviously help as well. And eventually, when they leave, the villagers feel indebted not to the entirety of Team 7, but to Naruto and Kyuyu who weren't in the forest the whole time training actually actively helping calling this bridge the great fox bridge team seven would now head back to the leaf would they would be notified that usually missions would be forced for the next five months but a special event known as the tuning exams happened about a month has passed since they had come out of the academy and every six months the tuning exam is hosted
one the day before the academy starts and the other six months in between the start of the two academy or two academy years so kakashi would present them with an opportunity even though five months is left he feels they could cram a lot of training in he really does want his genin to move on to the next the next tier of shinobi before anyone else in their generation does he knows guy's team who is a year older will be participating so he knows he'll have to push them to say the very least and for some reason when bringing this up naruto and qu seem kind of regressive sasuke is eager to not only learn new techniques but to master his newfound weapon Kakashi is eager to teach Sasuke and Naruto and Kyuu were already keen of this that Kakashi is forming a connection to Sasuke but that's not the point they're getting to. After having gotten back they had returned and had been informed that as the new royal couple as they're seen the two people that are seen as the utmost within the fox kingdom they would be forced to return to the fox village and stay there for a few months to not only set in stone the fact that they are the new leaders of the fox people but also to set an example within the summoning world even though the foxes themselves do not have a realm they call home they still have a high stature within the summoning animals so them presenting their new nobles and royals would be a thing they'd have to do Naruto and Kyuu at this time would have no choice. They'd have to return, leaving Sasuke to train with Kakashi. This is where we actually get to start on the Naruto Sage Mode part. It's been six parts and we haven't really gotten into this. And the reason for that is the setup to creating the Sage Mode. At this point, we can actually get to mass progressing the story as we're going to have our first time skip. We're not going to go through traditional time skip where we just skip over everything, but I will periodically explain what is happening. Our first start would be them arriving at the village, having an, en an encounter with Kyuu's father, Kyuton, where he would explain the entire situation in mass detail. They would both be given new garb, obviously that of royals, meaning kimono. Naruto would insist to have at least some form of protection, so both of them do have some kimono battle armor. This is not necessarily traditional, but Naruto could not be convinced otherwise. He would also be allowed to keep at least a single kunai on him the entire time. Kyuton knows that there isn't really anything against weapons since the toad always seems to bring theirs, so why not? He would then prepare for travel. We have a small skip to a summoning or to a meeting between tribes where two snakes, two toads, and Kyuton, Naruto, and Kyuu. These are most of the summonings. The reason that the slug isn't here is because she's just the one being within that contract. There's no real point for her to be here. Some other minor tribes like wolves, dogs, cats will all appear, but they just fall under the jurisdiction of the foxes since the foxes is the largest summoning animal group or at least the most powerful that don't have their own home dimension. So they speak on behalf of all these. Obviously, each and every summoning would reveal their new heir. And for Kyuton, he had two. Kyuu and Naruto. At this point, people would start questioning it since the only time two rulers would occur is with the marriage. And even though there was mass debate, they wouldn't be allowed to leave the summoning realm until Naruto and Kyuu were married. And believe it or not, Naruto and Kyuu weren't against this. They pretty much grew up together and do have emotions for each other if they'd like to admit it or not. So, it being said that the only way they're leaving as the royals and not just as plain nobles is if they get married. Obviously, the rest of the fox tribe was there, or at least the rest of the new generation, but they weren't anything to name since they were only being classed as nobles. Naruto and Kyuu having been accepted 
this would then have all the other summons not on their word but in the word of the elders or the previous generation of uh, leaders of the summonings would say that all the summonings are to stay in this place as they will arrange a marriage for the fox king at this point they would not know naruto is partially fox they or partially human or majority human not really being a fox but having the nine tails inside of him at least all except the toads the toads natural sensing ability helped them get past the scent of a fox and then feel not only a human but a beast inside of there and for some reason most of the summonings felt intimidated not only by Q.U.'s ferocity but by the nine tails energy just leaking off of naruto they could feel it you could feel its aura they could feel it emanating naruto and Q.U. in this time would hang around this the frog kingdom because they currently are on mount niaboku for this meeting Mount Nyaboku is usually the host since the toads are usually neutral in most affairs, at least when it doesn't come to being summoned. They would have a grand feast that night, obviously consisting of bugs. Most of the summonings don't really like this feast, but Naruto and Kyuu, they, 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 would, they would at least give it a chance. They, they would try the bugs, come on, don't, don't put it beneath them. So. They would try the bugs and would find to actually be tasty. So they'd actually dig in, putting a smile on some of the toads' faces, knowing that there's at least a competent pair of leaders out there. Obviously, they didn't expect two children to be these new leaders, but so be it. At this point, Naruto and Kyuu would eventually leave the feast, not really needing to stay there any longer since they had more of them filled up and needed some fresh air. When they make their way outside, they saw one of the Toadkin, or more specifically the Toad Boss, Gemabunta, teaching his two sons. They would stare across the balcony they were standing on to look upon a field of spikes. On these spikes, they see platforms, and on top of them standing two small frogs, or two small toads. Gamakichi and his brother, Gamatatsu. They would be currently learning the process of gathering nature energy. They, yes, did have the ability to natu naturally gather nature energy, but if they needed it at an accelerated rate during battle or something, this is the best way. A moment of stillness and silence. When those of frog kin are able to master sage art, even a moment would be enough to nearly refill their senjutsu reserves but for human this is impossible at least with their form of gathering nature energy naruto and Kyuu's keen sense of hearing would have them hear all this gamabunta had noted them there but would have assumed they wouldn't be able to hear it was quite a distance after all so he did not mind teaching his sons his sons after a while would give up but over the coming days, he would persist. Every day when this would occur, Naruto and Kyuu would stand on that balcony, listening to the tips that Gamabunta gave, when Naruto had a revelation. What if we could gather nature energy? Not in the same sense, of course. Earning a gap from Kyuu, to say the least. He'd explain. What if they were able to gather nature energy while still and then start storing it? somehow using this nature energy as a beacon to draw more in. Obviously this would be, it would be a craft far from perfected, at least to what his knowledge would say. He would ask if she would be in on it. It would have been days past since we had last saw the Kitsune couple take a break. They had been slaving away trying to figure out the ins and outs of nature energy. But it won't come easy. After all, their wedding's coming up, so maybe it's time they prepare. About a week has passed since the initial arrangement, but Naruto and Kyuu are ready nonetheless. They would have fox robe and would assume their human forms, at least for the remaining part of this excursion or this marriage. 
They would officially be marriage under married <laughs> under the name of the summonings, and this marriage would also classify under the world of shinobi, at least when prevented presented to the Hokage. I really do apologize if I do slur my words. I am kind of out of it right now, but yeah. So when it comes down to it, we see that Naruto and Kyuyu had gotten married, and it's been a while since they had actually continued their training. Time had come for them to return to the fox village, but they would actually request them and all the other foxkin staying here. Kyuton would ask why and Naruto would explain this crazy idea of having a fox sage mode. He would obviously say it's preposterous and he can't let the entire fox can stay here, at least not while their fox village is not protected. Naruto would give a valid argument on how it's more than possible, with Kyuton still not budging. He would make a deal with Naruto. He would give them the up and coming months until the tuning exams to develop this sage mode. And if they do successfully develop it, even if it's not complete, he would let them teach it to the rest of the Foxkin and even have them help the Foxkin master this if they can prove themselves within that tuning exams. They need to not only achieve Fox Age, but they need to become tuning. This is Q-Town's only request, meaning Naruto and Q-U wouldn't have a choice but to accept. Obviously, not much time would progress past this point when the rest of the Foxkin would set back out for the leaf. Naruto and Kyuya, on the other hand, would humbly request of the Toad Elders to let them stay, with the Toad Elders not even having a slight bit of a problem with it. Summoning should, in fact, learn a lot more, even though Naruto isn't exactly a summoning. At this point, Naruto would be revealed the entirety of his heritage by choice of the Toad Sage. The great sage of the toads and its current leader, at least technically speaking. Even though the boss is Gamabunta, the leader from behind the scenes, or at least politically, is this sage. He has been said to be around since the time of the Sage of Six Paths, having him become a sage himself, but obviously in another sense. He would be revealed of his father and even his, his father's master and all their journeys. You could say the tale of Jiraiya the Gallant, who is gonna stop by pretty soon, or at least this is the information that the Toads give. They'd say that even though Sage Mode is pretty simple to learn, it is time consuming, and creating a Sage Mode is unheard of. Even the great Toad Sage had just had the ability to use this sage mode at least as long as he could remember he doesn't actually remember someone having created it he just knows that most toads genetically inherit the ability to use nature energy and teaching this to humans took some experimentation but nothing abominable so when he asked jiraiya to eventually return without the knowledge of naruto and Kyuyu, he would do so in hopes that Jiraiya could sway Minato's young, and maybe even teach him to be as great as his father, for he might be the child of destiny. Some time had obviously also passed at the Leaf, where Sasuke and Kakashi were currently slaving away at training. They had not even been in the main village, they were in a training ground slightly outside of it, obviously as I said, slaving away. No one has seen them and had actually gotten worried reporting this to the Hokage, but the Hokage had exactly known where they had been. They had been training. Not only Sasuke, but Kakashi as well. After the fight with Zabuza and having to have been saved, he had realized, no, he's not strong enough. So, his eye and him will progress. First of all, it took Naruto and Kyuyu for him to realize his jutsu was imperfect without the eye, and he had perfected it. Now, he will use the eye, he will improve it, hone it throughout these months. At the end of it, he will have a power beyond reach, 
And Sasuke, on the other hand, he had shown through, just like the prodigy he is. He had progressed his Sharingan to the second Tomo fully, and had even been able to successfully channel Lightning Chakra effortlessly, making not only the blade lighter, but making it move faster, hit harder, pierce quicker. He even learned how to attach it to his back with Chakra, having some semblance of permanent or high level chakra control, having to be able to do it unconsciously, at least to a higher extent unconscious, unlike tree and water walking where it does take some form of concentration. So when it comes down to it, Sasuke is already progressing. All that needs work now is his speed. He was already one of the faster people in the leaf, but Rock Lee, Neji, Naruto, and Kyuyu will all be his competitors. Kakashi, knowing that Kyuyu and Naruto were going on a sabbatical, knows that they're going to come back more powerful and more knowledgeable than when they left. So, all they can do is prepare. Six months had passed and it's time for them to say goodbye to the Toads. But it's not that simple. Naruto and Kyuyu had gotten along with their Toad friends and are pretty saddened to say goodbye. Everyone from Gamabunta to Gama again to Gamakichi and Gamatatsu, they were all like family at this point. It's pretty rare that summoning species get along, but this is a beautiful occasion. A green light, if you could say so. But when Naruto and Kyuyu had to leave, they had to leave. It was mere days till Konoha's tuning exams would begin. So when they did return, at least to the Foxen village that is, they would be greeted by a bunch of happy fox kind. They would quickly show off their new power. Even though it had only been six months, they had made more progression in said six months than they had up until now, period. Obviously, their base had not yet, or their human form had not yet caught up to their giant fox form, or tailed fox form as I like to call it, because they do become rather large. They are more powerful than most tuning at present day, at the very least. Kyuton, the leader of the pack, would actually approach the two children, congratulating them not only on getting married, which had happened early on, but had also congratulated them on the massive power boots. They had even become higher in stature, their bodies had developed more and they look older. Guess all that nature energy isn't as useful for your youth as they proclaim it to be. As he would laugh. Naruto and Kyuyu would just blankly stare at him as he would push them on to go say hi to everyone else in the village. Obviously the fact that they're married wouldn't be revealed to absolutely everyone. Especially not the people in the village. Higher ups like the Hokage know about the foxes living there and also about their customs, religions, and all that type of stuff. So they know that he knows that Naruto and Kyuyu had gotten married, but he wouldn't say anything about it exactly. So when it comes down to it, the first people Naruto and Kyuyu would run into are these little kids. They don't know exactly who they are, but what it seems like is they're about the age of the academy. This obviously being Konohamaru, Moegi, and Udon. They seem to be a group of sorts. They had also seemed to be running away from something. Or more specifically, someone. The person that had been chasing after them's voice was all familiar, at least to Naruto. Almost as an instinct, he would grab the kids and jump away as a mad Ibisu would be running through the street looking for these three. He would say that that was close with Konohamaru saying that that was awesome. How'd you do that, boss? With him looking down. Oh, I grabbed you by accident. A moment later, Kyuyu would land onto the roof asking Naruto why he had done that. He would scratch the back of his head saying that 
remembers Ebisu chasing him when he was a kid. He used to prank him a lot back when Ebisu was a uh, tuning. It would earn a laugh from Kyu to say the very least, and she didn't learn too much about Naruto from before he had joined the Foxen Village. On the other hand, this intrigues Konohamaru. He'd demand Naruto give him answers on how he knows Ebisu and all that type of stuff and how he became so strong. He must listen to him after all since he's the third Hokage's grandson. Naruto would scoff as he would rub the kid's head saying, Don't you worry kid, I'll teach you something, but first you need to prove to me that you're worth it. What are the properties of Chakra? Konohamaru would start naming it out as if he was reading it from a scroll, which he had been doing. This would receive him a pat in the head, or a bonk on the head more specifically, from Naruto, who would tell the nonce that that's not what he meant. This would progress on, and as the day moved on, and conversation between the small group Naruto and Kyuu happened, they had decided they would teach the kids something they had learned. Not something as advanced as the Chidori or anything, or no transformation jutsu, since that would be letting too much out of the fox in kind. But instead, the uncontrolled chakra control, or more specifically, the chakra bursts. To start off with, they need to teach them how to tree walk. And somehow, these kids were all at least on a prodigy level. They had not even taken a few hours, and they had mastered it. But obviously, there was communication between them. They would have actually helped each other do exactly that, climb the tree. They would explain that too much shoots them off and too little lets them slip. So after a while, they were able to climb the tree. Naruto wouldn't really have much more to explain when he would say, Now I want you to on purpose burst too much chakra and readjust it to once again land on another surface and stick to it. And do that constantly. They would ask him exactly how he meant that with him saying he's only going to show them once. He would step on the side of a tree as he would burst between about five of them in a single moment. The kids barely being able to see him. They would obviously be asking questions, but he says that he can't show them anything or tell them again. So they need to figure it out. He would then be off with the wave as Kyu would laugh giving a small wave before her herself would turn around and follow after Naruto. These three academy students just got a lot of information that they will use to make themselves a lot more powerful. At least, that's what they thought. Maybe this would help them get away from Ibisu faster. Who knows? On the other hand, Naruto and Kyuu would now be reunited with Team 7. They'd see Sasuke is rocking an all-new look, being the black suit, that we had seen him using the tuning exams initially, and we see that Kakashi had looked rather tired. When they had questioned this, Kakashi would say that Sasuke had had insisted on progressing his Chidori, and he had succeeded to do so. Obviously, this would earn a curiosity from Naruto and Kyuu, but Kakashi would say that Sasuke would just have to show them himself. But they would ask how exactly Kakashi was so tired if Sasuke was the one performing it constantly. That's when Sasuke himself would butt in. While he was busy with his technique, Kakashi had been doing Chidori after Chidori to master this new purple lightning technique he had created. It's a version of it that doesn't as heavily rely on his Chidori, or more specifically his Sharingan. Because he's channeling chakra throughout his entire body, not necessarily body flickering. He's increasing his perception, at least in the one eye that doesn't have a Sharingan. And even though this is still chakra being channeled to the eye, it's a lot less than it would take to channel to his Sharingan. Not even a tenth of what it would take to channel to his Sharingan. So, definitely improvement. On top of that, he had been using it that often to drain his reserves. He had felt that when he used his Sharingan against Zabuza, he had gotten way too tired way too quickly. It shows that he had become rusty after leaving the Anbu. So, that's the answer. At least, that's the answer they would get from a combination between Sasuke and Kakashi talking. 
at least that would give them insight on Kakashi telling Sasuke a lot about his life. On the other hand, Sasuke would demonstrate his technique by charging at both of them. They would see the lightning energy building up with throughout his body, but not until he was right in front of them did he char charge it in both of his hands simultaneously. With an open palm, he would strike towards them. Not with the palm itself, but the tip of his fingers. They would see this and would immediately compare it to the Hyuga fighting style, the gentle fist. When they would question this, Sasuke would brought up that in the time they were gone, he saw another team training. He thinks they were Team Guy or something? Yeah, Team Guy. This consisting of the leader himself, Guy, Neji, Tenten, -ten, and Lee, a group of other Genin. He had said that this group would most likely be their biggest threat within the Chunin exams itself. Naruto and Kyuyu would merely nod as he explains how the Neji kid probably matched them with their lightning speed intact, at least before their training. And on top of that, he wasn't using any chakra enhancements on its body itself. He was naturally that fast. And on top of that, his Jugen strikes were precise and filled with enough chakra to burst a chakra point. So they'd know to avoid him as much as possible. On the other hand, Sasuke himself had progressed by copying these movements. He had even awakened his third to uh, tomo of his Sharingan. Even though that is the case, there was still this other odd kid. He didn't seem to have an active chakra network, or at least not a noticeable one. That's similar to one of a civilian that's never performed a jutsu in their life. He'd explained that when this kid was training, he was moving at an incredible pace. So fast that he could barely keep up with the Sharingan, with him even stuttering around in his Sharingan. That's how fast the movement was. Even at that, it was quite blurry. So, this kid is not something to underestimate for his lack of chakra. Naruto and Kyuyu would nod, but they would smell something. Naruto would leap towards someone who was seemingly doing the same to him. And when they clash, it's revealed that it's Kiba. Kiba would spout... Naruto, as Naruto would yell, Kiba. And the reason for this is, it's basically the fox and the dog. For the sake of it, Naruto and Kiba had basically become like dog and cat. Every time they had seen each other, they'd wanted to prove their superiority, without it actually being directly compared to animals. Obviously, they would clash every time, Nails amped with chakra, which is something Kiba had learnt from all his clashing with Naruto. Even though Naruto had more commonly clashed with Sasuke during the academy, Kiba and Naruto had their fair share of spars. And on top of that, Hinata was a lot more confident. She had actually been good friends with Kiyu, surprisingly. So, her confidence was up there. She didn't have an, any attraction towards Naruto per se, and neither did she towards anyone else. She still admired Neji, but in a sense that she one day wants to be stronger than him and then free the side house. So, all those characters are progressing. Obviously, Shino was just Shino standing in a corner somewhere, doing something, but in this case, he had snuck up behind them, saying something, scaring the living shice out of Naruto since he'd usually hear someone coming long before they're even there. Surprisingly, to even this group, another group in Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji's team, or Team 10, would arrive there as well. This would sparse a conversation between all three groups and how they hope they make it to the finals. One Shikamaru would go into an explanation. More like a sparse, he was kind of talking in his mind but talking out loud. He would mention about how this tune in exams was only acceptable to Konoha. He'd explained that every six months, a tune-in exams happen, and the one that happens only once a year is the Elemental Nation tune-in exams, where one of the villages hosts it and all the other villagers, villages participate, or at least those that accept. And the other is an in-village tune-in exam to test their true skill. Obviously, the one with other villages is on the fence, kind of, since... Their villages aren't really all that 
intertwined right now. They're on pretty thin lines. So, the one they'll be participating in, the new Organian at least, and also that of Team Guy, will be this tuning exams, which is the one held in Konoha for Konoha Shinobi. So that's the catch with this specific tuning exams. They haven't leaked anything about the tests, and he couldn't really find much himself. So all that he could hope is that them as teams would work together to thwart off the other hundreds of Genin that exist within the Leaf. Naruto would actually be abrupt by the saying hundreds? How could there be hundreds? There wasn't even that many students this time around, with Shikamaru finally realizing he was talking out loud. Ino this time would respond, smacking Naruto on the back of the head, explaining that just because they had graduated before them doesn't make them tuning. A lot of people never become tuning because of the tuning exam simply being too hard, and that there are people that sometimes have up to 10 tries. This is where a voice no one, not even Kakashi himself had realized, would come out from a tree. Oh, so like me, obviously being Kabuto. As he would come out the tree line, he would say that he had himself tried it seven times and had failed every time. That's why he started accumulating knowledge. The rookie nine would look at the man that had just walked out the tree line, being once again Kabuto, as they would obviously have questions. More menial questions, but when did he get here, and how did they know they were gathering here since they didn't know they were gathering here, it kinda just happened. Kabuto on the other hand would say that he was training in a in a field nearby when he felt a large buildup of chakra as he looks over at Sasuke who had obviously done the dual shidori. He would then push up his glasses as he tells them to gather around him. Obviously everyone would be skeptical at first but they kind of make a circle around him and he'd sit down on the floor. He would start shuffling a deck of cards and someone would actually make an outbreak about this, this being Ino. Ino would obviously be like, what the hell does a deck of cards mean and why the hell are you bothering us? Like, just beat it. With Kabuto just saying, wait, as he puts the cards down. Ino, still confused, goes on about her rant, but Kabuto puts his finger on one, channeling chakra, as he does for every card he had placed down. Obviously, he starts naming people. These are the people that cards are on the list so basically he says something like gosha mashigaki graduate four years ago and so on and so forth as he names more and more that's when he gets to an interesting trio he says neji huga last year graduate team leader guy team team guy and he basically explains neji's feats and his all around bonuses to say the very least like his chakra reserve estimation his control estimation once again his combat prowess all that type of stuff then obviously people are surprised by this Hinata more successfully she actually brings it up once again Hinata's not as shy as she was in canon she kind of just says how'd you get that information about Neji are you perhaps a spy obviously she says this jokingly but it wasn't like Hinata to joke, so people thought she was being serious, if even for a moment. She would kind of just, like, get one of those nervous strucks that all of us do, and just kind of go, uh, never mind, as Kabuto continues. Last year graduate, 1010, no last name. Ability, weapon specialist, ceiling jutsu, high, and... Then he once again goes on all her feats, like the amount of missions and so on and so forth. The last one is the most interesting. He says, Team Guy, last year graduate, Rock Lee. Combat prowess, unknown. Chakra, none. Reserve, none. Ninjutsu, none. Genjutsu, none. Feet, all the above of Ten Ten and, uh, and obviously Neji Hyuga. And that's when he proceeds to go and team leader. This obviously throws everyone off since they just, he just said he didn't have chakra, ninjutsu, genjutsu or anything. 
How's he the team leader? But this is more, how do I say, it? idealistic. There is no essential team leader in those groups. But let's just say, Guy would probably trust Lee the most. And he would lose that faith when Lee initially did what he did in canon and challenged Sasuke to a fight. So, for now, let's just say Lee is kind of like an unannounced leader of the group. And that's when Kabuto flashes all the remaining cards that he has there. Team 7, Team 8, Team 10. And then he just looks around and names every member of the Rookie 9. This obviously shocks all of them because he has way too much information. And now even Kakashi's curious. And he's not afraid to ask. With Kabuto saying, It's easy. When you got a bunch of genin like these with lips that are pretty loose word spreads around the village even if it be through civilians their parents or even them themselves i hear everything and this obviously sets off a red light in kakashi's mind but he can't really do anything about it so for now all the teams are kind of worried about kabuto but he kind of stands up and says don't worry we're all from the same village we'll get along as he kind of just walks back into the forest line and as he does, the teams, or the Rookie 9, would see two individuals standing there waiting for him as they just walk off. Obviously, Kakashi, he's like, I haven't seen Kabuto, I haven't seen those other two, I don't know who any of these people are. So, he is, he's kind of on edge, but he did hear Kabuto saying he did take the tuning exam seven times. So, he's like thinking that Kabuto probably graduated from the academy whilst he was still in the Anbu. Ugh, oh, the Ambu. He shouldn't have let himself get so rusty. At least that's what he thinks to himself. As he just kind of walks off. He tells the teams to prepare. The tuning exams will happen soon. And that's what will happen. Naruto and Kyu would head off to the Foxen village as everyone else goes either to their homes or clan homes. And we don't really have much to discuss here. Maybe a few more inter altercations with Konohamaru, which I do like to add, but for now I'ma just say it's just improving their skill in Taijutsu or something, as we move on to the next big altercation. It is the day before the tuning exams and Naruto and Kyuu are making their way into the village to go get supplies, when they would run into a curious person, this time once again being Kiba. As Kiba leaps at Naruto, just screaming Naruto, Naruto doesn't have the same reaction as last time. Last time it was kind of just a clash, but this time Naruto swings his leg around and just kind of kicks Kiba into a wall. As Kiba rubs the rubble off of himself and stands up, he's like, geez, you didn't have to be that harsh, I was just saying hello. With Naruto just scoffing, saying, you should be preparing for the tuning exams, you dog bastard. With Kiba obviously biting back, yeah, whatever, kitty cat. Naruto once again screaming, I'm not a cat, I'm a fox, you runt. And so on and so forth. It just went on like this for a while until Kiba's team and Naruto, uh, Naruto's team, or basically Kyuu, she's the only person there from Naruto, comes up and basically drags them away from each other, or else this is just going to go on for way too long. And throughout the rest of the day, they have a few more run ins, but it ends up the same with them being probably either beaten up or knocked out by their teammates and just kind of dragged away so yeah and not as a little bit more aggressive in this to say the very least and on the other hand naruto and qu wouldn't really have time to get much done they would restock on supplies but that's about it as the day would blow over so all they have left is the tuning exams As they go to sleep that night, or attempt to, they didn't have much success. Time goes by, maybe hours, as the moon is in the middle of the sky, indicating that it is midnight. As Naruto would finally speak on the matter of neither him or his partner being able to gain any sleep, saying, what do you think it's going to be like? Obviously, she's confused and will just retort with, well, what do you mean? And he says, you know, being chuny. Do we get to go on missions together anymore? Or do we even get to see each other? I heard that Chunins have a lot of work and sometimes go on solo missions. 
with Kyu just having a laugh. Oh, so you're scared to be without me. Naruto would kind of hop up with a scowl in his face saying that that's not what I meant and you know it. I meant like us, a team seven, like will we will we continue seeing Kakashi Sensei or Sasuke? And this is when Kyu gets a little more serious. She says that she's almost as old as Naruto, but foxes they become more mature earlier on. In the sense that even a year or two after being born, they can comprehend the full spectrum of the world as if they were an adult already. So when it comes down to it, she's seen a lot. And when it comes down to what it's like being a Chunin, the ones she's seen almost never come back. This obviously puts like a stake through Naruto's heart, at least emotionally, as he's wondering what she means by that. Well, she would elaborate. She would say that a lot of times Chunin are sent out like the leaders of Genin groups or other Chunin even. And more often than not, they either die on a mission or come back to be discarded by the village for failing. So when it comes down to it, Chunin have a... They have a lot of responsibilities. That's why she'd rather just stay like this. Naruto can't help but to feel the same as he kind of wants to stay a Genin forever now. And when it comes down to it, maybe that's what they do. When they go up the next day, they encounter everyone, actually everyone this time, as we see that not even, not even a single person like backed out. We see Kabuto's team, the Rookie 9, and even Guy's team here. So it's really strange to say the very least. And as someone comes up to them to ask them if they're the team partic uh, teams participating in the tune exams, the, the group just says yes. But when it comes down to it, as he's asking if they could fill out the paperwork and all that, Naruto would put up his hand and asks if he could, you know, not participate but have his teammates still be able to. Kiryu basically does the same. She says she also doesn't want to participate in this exact tuning exams. This person, who I will just be calling a proctor for right now, says that you need a team of three. And it doesn't really matter if they're your team as long as it's a team of three. And when it comes down to it, we as an audience see Kabuto like nudging at one of his teammates. For now, I'm gonna say it's the one with the ability to stretch. Basically saying that he'll leave too, he doesn't feel comfortable in these since he has lost seven times and got roughed up quite a few times. The proctor would allow Sasuke to enter among Kabuto's team and Sasuke will kind of allow it. He obviously doesn't know why Naruto and Kyu don't want to participate because even if they have been doing nothing but slouching these last six months, they should still be stronger than anyone else here. Except himself, of course. At least that's what he thinks. But he wants to become a Chunin, regardless of what happens. So Naruto and Kyuu would kind of just return to the Fox compound. And when they reveal this to Kyutan, he wouldn't even be disappointed. He'd say he understands, but becoming a Chunin is something that every shinobi has to go through. When they later revealed this to Kakashi, he was a little worried about Sasuke, to say the very least, since he was with the unfamiliar team that might backstab him at any time. But he's, he's, he's his student, so he will make it through. Now, all there is to do is watch. As Sasuke would pass through the first exam, only residents from Konoha actually participating, moving on to the Forest of Death. The Forest of Death in this continuity would have been used as the second exam for every tuning exams held in the leaf. And what would kind of happen is it would be explained that a lot of people had died in this forest. It could be by their teammates backstabbing them, obviously giving a small red light in Sasuke's mind with him just thinking these bastards try to backstab me and kill them so quickly that they won't even realize that I did it or something like that. And they would be forced to sign a waiver that no one's held accountable for their death if that just so happens. And for the most part, I'd say it would go pretty fluently until they have an altercation with Orochimaru. Orochimaru would obviously approach this new group consisting of Kabuto, 
the teammate with the ability to absorb chakra and sasuke and he would seemingly not know kabuto of course he knows kabuto but when it comes down to it he's hiding that so that sasuke doesn't realize it he would pretty easily incapacitate sasuke uh, or at least kabuto and his teammate basically leaving sasuke with the imprint of huh, weaklings and as he usually does he throws a fireball at orochimaru orochimaru being dressed as some random leaf shinobi yes he had taken over someone's body and now him being burnt clean of it so he would reveal himself as orochimaru obviously not saying anything on it but leaving sasuke with the hickey nevertheless so how's sasuke gonna you know deal with getting a hickey and how is kabuto's team gonna come back from this beating well find out on the next part of what if naruto was a fox age sheesh that was kind of rough as i told you guys this was not the best of quality this was a time in my channel where i was trying to improve via editing but my audio wasn't even at a really good place and i wasn't really putting all the effort i could have into editing more just wanting a visual than caring about the quality of that visual so if you guys really want me to continue this i will continue it within my newer art style i guess with my newer type of renders that's a lot higher quality of course but if you guys want me to restart and remake this series into something that could be great make sure to go down into the comments or say yay or nay depending on your opinion once again yay is for yes restart it and make it a new and nay is for completely continuing not caring about the past of this series whatsoever and just finishing it off once and for all but yeah have a incredible morning afternoon and evening stay safe this has been your boy six peace until next time nuts we'll meet again in the virtual world where heroes ascend keep the flame of adventure burning bright until next time nuts let's take flight